what I'm doing in uh, in my writing courses, my first year uh, writing courses, and how I'm using both Panopto, but also the Brightspace video notes uh, to give student feedback. So I did a, a, a brief kind of literature overview thinking about feedback. And here primarily I'm talking about the type of feedback that instructors leave on paper, student um, kind of extended writing. And this was so funny. I was looking at this and, and we can all probably recognize from our own student days uh, some of these complaints about especially the illegible, you know, written feedback. I went to a college where grades in the English department were not given until you got home and then you saw your grades. So papers were had many, many comments on them. Um, but like some of these, you know, uh, complaints, I found a lot of it illegible and often very vague. So we can all probably relate to this. And again, focusing on negative aspects, I think all of us um, as instructors probably feel that we've got to point out what's going wrong. Um, so this is what some of the more recent research, this is from a 2020 literature review. Um, adi additionally, um, what instructors perceive apparently as helpful feedback kind of differs from what students perceive as helpful feedback. And I really thought this was interesting that the idea that students wanted to have feedback that demonstrates instructor engagement and has clear suggestions uh, for improvement. Because of course that one would think that would be helpful. So this idea that feedback really is a social process. And I think this is particularly important for those of us teaching online, right? We all talk about uh, instructor presence, but there are the, elements about um, power and emotion, and it can be so difficult to convey emotion in written feedback. So all of this, though, apparently impacts how messages um, are interpreted by students, of course. And again, going back to what they perceive as helpful, um, this idea that things need to be concrete, right? But what interested me about this was um, in this study, text specific comments, because this is what I'm going to touch upon when I talk about the screen capture uh, capabilities of things like uh, Panopto and Cultura and um, Yusha, the idea that you can use screencasting. So, Another important thing, when you look at the literature surrounding feedback, and there's not a whole lot about it, it's one of these um, areas that has not been like heavily researched, but timely, timely is super, super important. So just in time feedback in a concrete way that is text specific and is encouraging. Now we look at, we were just talking um, before we started about audio feedback alone. And I really thought this was interesting, you know, that students, obviously the audio feedback is meaningful um, for three reasons from this study. It's easier to understand. Again, we go back to handwriting is illegible. Of course, many of us now are now typing in comments. So that, that probably is, somewhat gone to the wayside. Um, this idea of being more in depth and more genuine. So I thought that this was all very interesting, but what stood out to me when I looked at this article that 68% in this particular um, study from 2016, 68% of them even when they had the audio feedback said, well, I, I do want written feedback because of the visual part of it. So what about video feedback? And 
video feedback and by video feedback, I mean the talking head feedback, like me talking, but with nothing really being shown on the screen. Um, people did value this. The student said it was easier to give encouragement. I love this one. It made the instructors feel more real, you know, as if there is an actual person behind the course. And, you know, I, I love this quote. This is from the study it was of graduate students, a quote taken from a student's feedback. It's not like he was being a robot because obviously we get the capture the tone of voice is there. So what I primarily focused on was um, these two things, screencasting. And by that, I mean, you know, you're putting up the screen as I'm doing now um, alone with the instructor narration, but then also what, what I guess you all can see me talking, screencasting, but with the talking head. Because I didn't think that would really matter to students to see a little box of me talking. So I primarily focused on these two things. All right, so what was I working with? So these are my students right now. They're both live courses. Um, actually, I, I had, um, there's another course in which I did this too, but I didn't collect the responses. But I, right now I'm teaching a hybrid course at business students, business uh, majors, and, but this is a comp course and they're right now working on their business plans. They're doing a wonderful job with their business plans. They meet Tuesday, Friday in person. We have some asynchronous work on Wednesdays. Um, and the async group obviously were asynchronous and their focus, it was not business. Their question for the semester was how can we improve higher education? I do have built in uh, due dates for assignments. We follow on Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, both using Brightspace. All right, so how did this go? So I use different forms of video feedback. So on a couple of lower stake assignments, there was one graded assignment I did this with. Um, I did leave some in, inline comments on the actual um, essays, but then it was just me talking all right. And for this, I use Brightspace Video Note, and I'll show you how, how you can use that tool. Um, so that was that. Looked at video style one. Video style, style two was screencasting the essay, bringing the essay up, um, leaving some inline comments. But I narrate, I walk the student through their essay, and I make comments. And I also, as you can see here from this screenshot, I did have a rubric, okay? So a lot of stuff going on there, a lot of different types of feedback, but no picture of my face. I'm not, they don't see me. But then I said, let me just do this. And I did wind up doing this with a picture of me talking and then everything else. So this had everything in it um, here. And again, some inline comments and me walking through the paper. All right. So I wanted just to stop for a minute um, and show you if you have bright space, this was the most effective way to insert a video note. So what you do um, in the gradebook area, we're going to leave some comments here. And let's say this is the student's draft. Um, you press on that, that little plus button and you put insert stuff and then you can do add video note. And in a second, I'm going to ask Kate to say something about this because I say here, check with your campus's OIT staff, longer videos, like I try to keep these videos to about three minutes, but longer ones will take up space. Is that correct, Kate, on Brightspace? And you might not want to do that? Yeah, we haven't heard officially if we're gonna have specific caps of data, um, but they have been hinting at that. So we are encouraging faculty not to, you know, keep too much data right on Brightspace. Um, we did find out though that those won't transfer, like if you copy a course to a new semester, that 
those comments don't transfer. So it's not like you're duplicating that as good. you go. So that's a good thing. But yeah, I would I would keep those shorter. Okay, so and indeed, that's what I did. I do with lower stake writing assignments, where I would just say, hey, you know, good job, that kind of thing. And again, you can hear obviously the tone of my tone of voice. And, and yeah, okay, we feel a little warm and fuzzy here. Um, here, though, when you have these other um, uh, screen capture tools, I recorded first and then, but did the same mechanism where you hit the plus and search stuff. And at the bottom, if it's integrated with Brightspace, you just bring in your Panopto video that you've recorded. And I was, one thing I, I didn't put in this slide deck, you know, I labeled the videos very clearly, you know, Catherine, um draft feedback on major pro or whatever it was that made sense so i i didn't mess up uh, by sending people the wrong video um at least uh until recently i did do it once <laughs> okay so how long and i was not timing myself i just looked back at when putting this presentation together i looked at my async class and i wanted to see how long are these videos so for the low stake writing assignment, it was two to three minutes. The graded assignments were five to six range. And I feel that when you're giving a grade, sometimes you're having a conversation, obviously a one-sided conversation when I'm recording it with the student. Sometimes we feel we're kind of justifying the grade, right? This kind of, or not just explaining, but looking and saying, this is why this was, you know, here's where you were really strong and here's where some areas that needed some work. Um, the drafts I just did, went through their drafts last week. Um, I did notice that with the drafts, I left more inline comments. And the reason is because they're able to revise that draft. So directive comments, telling them what they should be focusing on, how they could maybe move paragraphs around, that kind of thing. And then I, I spent some time interpreting these kind of tricky or, you know, I anticipated comments that might be unclear to them. So that's what I found with that class. This class, there really wasn't much of a difference. I, I had first thought, and again, I did not think about this till putting this presentation together. I hypothesized that I might spend longer talking to the async class than I would with the students I see in person, but that was not the case. Um, again, when I'm the, in here, the graded assignments, there are less written comments. Um, I'm noting strong ideas and it was just very similar to the other students. I didn't see much of a difference. Um, this particular assignment, it was a SWOT chart and there was a lot less writing. So this was pretty quickly. I was able to just, I left some inline comments, but the video wasn't that long. All right, so are there any questions so far? I guess it's pretty straightforward. So this is the feedback that I got. Oh, yes, Kate. Did you go through the paper first as like a first pass so that you sort of had a sense of what you were gonna comment on all the time or did you sort of just excellent. open yeah. it and start talking? <laughs> no, excellent. I left the, that's a great point. I left the inline comments and then I recorded. So I had done a first pass, leaving some comments, and then I recorded. And another thing that I discovered that I need to write down and remember is that one time I went through and read first, and then I came back the next day to record, and that was not as effective. I think doing both things at once. And I'll, I'll share with you how long this takes to do. It's not maybe as long as you might think. So the students in the, the hybrid course, um, I got 17 responses to an anonymous uh, Google, I mean, a forms uh, survey. They thought it was, you know, it looks like for the most part, they give it a 4.5. 
the async class gave it a 4.9. I, you know, this is just, you know, almost anecdotal, you know, you've got 12 responses, but that would probably be, you know, you know, here's people I'm meeting in person and here, you know, not. So that makes sense. Um, so here, this is, you know, a kind of a, a word cloud here. So helpful, saw I did wrong, errors, okay, video feedback. And pulling out a little bit, um, I realized I read your directions wrong. I think I highlighted that later. This was really revealing to me and the video feedback made fixing it quite obvious. So that, I thought that was interesting um, in the hybrid class. Oh yeah, I read the directions wrong. Someone made this suggestion to show the rubric. So um, I haven't done that yet, doing that, but I thought that would be interesting. And more, of they wanted more. I thought I gave a brief explanation, but apparently not enough. Um, here, again, this is all, you know, narrative. It's very... Um, positive here. You know, I thought this was obvious, but being able to pinpoint certain errors with a mouse cursor is more effective at showing feedback. So yeah, definitely. Um, you got to hear what you are lacking, really hear it. Um, and I thought that was also interesting, you know, hearing, hearing it. So here, this is from the async course. So I saw harsh over video and I clicked on it because I was like, oh no, what did I do? And it was the opposite, actually. I find it to be helpful. I can skim over written feedback, but it's good to listen to your thoughts as you went along the paper, as well as suggestions. And this I thought was great. And this is just personal, but it seems less harsh over video. So that does kind of tie in with the research that you, you seem like a real person and um, yeah. So that makes sense. Making that connection with the students. Um, this I thought, and again, this is all mostly, it's all positive. Um, having the visual and verbal parts combined, which I think ties in to right talking about multimedia and the power of it um is useful but the annotations are also well done so all of these things coming together um as being very helpful and then here i went back to this i didn't realize i copied this twice but i i love that someone admitting they read the directions wrong uh, that was that was great so all right so i asked the students at this point I had done one that was a screencast, just looking at the paper and then me talking. And then I did one right with the talking head, just me talking and no paper on the screen. So I asked them, which type of video feedback did you find more valuable? So would it be um, the screencasting or was it just the talking head? or I have no preference. I thought maybe people would have no preference. Preference. I, I actually thought, or should I combine both approaches? So yeah, so blue is the screencast that they liked better than the talking head, but red is, can you try combining the two? I, that surprised me again, because I didn't think that would matter. Um. So I did do, you know, this was like, what should I do? This is after they had, I said, you know, next semester, I asked my async students, should I combine the screencasting with the talking head? Yes, uh, I do think you should include both the video. It's helpful to see. Um, the video is helpful. It's easier to engage in the video when I can see both you and the work on the screen. So I thought that was really interesting. So that's what I'm doing now. So there we go. There's my tip of the day. Um, even for introverts, 
you know, you don't maybe like to see yourself as a talking head there. Apparently students appreciate it. And I do remember now, you know, I have seen some studies suggesting that as long, maybe it's just not overdone, you know, if you're going to go more than, uh, I mean, six minutes is probably fine. Maybe it's not so great 30 minutes of that. I don't know. So how do students in Brightspace access this feedback? And I had our OIT uh, staff set up a, a dev site for me so I could see what it looks like. So they'll go into their grades. And then this is a fake student. Um, but this is what it looks like. And you can see, you can view in Brightspace. There's the video, Panopto video, inline feedback, and the rubric. And then here, just pretend that's my face. But here, this is what the little video note looks like on the student end. So it's very easy for them to go in there, to click, to see it, and then to see the inline feedback, see the rubric. So that's really nice. If you if you don't have the ability to screencast um, and you just want to leave a little video, it is true. Brightspace makes it pretty easy. It's pretty easy to do. So here's the crux of the question for us as instructors. Yeah, more feedback is great, targeted feedback. Um, but what are we talking about in terms of time? I'm positing, you know, with someone with um, the, you know, kind of used to, to creating a video and, you know, there's no technological thing you have to learn at this point. Um, this is a study that said, yeah, it takes about 20 minutes for most people to grade a paper. Now we're not saying how long the paper is. I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure a 10 page paper, it would depend, but you know, let's say a five page paper, uh, maybe if it's the first time you've seen it, you haven't seen any drafts before. Okay. 20, 20 minutes to grade, but when you have video feedback, you probably are leaving less written feedback because you can speak it. Um, they did find in their studies, though, that it took about 25 minutes for the entire grading process, which would mean uh, leaving some inline comments and then recording the video, you know, and so forth. So they said, you know, you, you're moving up maybe five minutes. All right. Um, so if you were to leave the equivalent written feedback, and of course it would take much more time. If I were typing out everything I'm saying, and we all know this, it would take a really long time to do. So you are saving some time there. You can give, I think, more kind of complex, uh, feedback. Now, this is where the time saving comes in, at least to me. I anticipate the questions that I don't have students coming necessarily to his, I mean, office hours, uh, emailing me with questions. Um, not that I mind that, but, you know, I, I'm not fielding a bunch of emails about problems with, uh, you know, the feedback that I'm giving especially on drafts. No one's really coming back to me with, well, what did you mean by, because I can anticipate that and kind of talk about it. And it seems to settle all of that is, is much, much decreased. The other cool thing that saves me time is I can, when I'm looking at a student paper, and this is really, really, really powerful, especially with first year students, I can bring in, I can open up my tab over here and say, you know, when you're searching in this database, let's look at business insights or let's look at ABI inform and typing something in and saying, you know, try this search and see what you get. And wow, again, it just saves time, even class time having to go over it. Um, nowadays, you know, with the screencasting software, if it's integrated into Brightspace, used to be you had to like upload stuff um, from like other sources, you know, upload a file. You know, we don't have to do that. It's very easy. It's just a click. 
And what you can do eventually is using kind of indirect feedback, like highlighting text where you say, you know, it sounds a little awkward. Have you read that out loud? You know, I think the word that in the sentence is making the sentence awkward. Can you hear that? And instead of typing that, you know, and then I can be kind of more hands off when it comes to the line editing. Um, so I think so that extra five minutes, maybe, I mean, I'm finding it takes me about 20 minutes, any extra time, maybe saving me time in the long run though. So this is what is, was very powerful to me also. Um, do you have any questions? Nah, nope. You know, because you've gotten this feedback and you know, occasionally there are like one or two questions, but I think this to me, I was like, yeah, this is what I'm getting from students. Um, so in the future, what I'm thinking about is again, retreating from some of the line editing to maybe cut down on some of the time. Um, but then also using this approach for peer critiquing, why not? See what, see how that works for peer, where you break them up into groups and have them critique one another. Uh, why not have them shoot a Panopto video discussing uh, the draft and leaving that uh, for students, their peers to look at. Now, and again, Kate, if you don't mind jumping in here, here is a warning. So the first time I did this, uh, when I thought I just wanna leave a short video, so in this area where I'm, you know, grading, I, I clicked here and this was not effective. And can you explain why you really need to go here and open this up and then get into video now, Kate? Yeah, so this is a quirk that we discovered um, with Brightspace in that feedback shows up in different areas. So if, you, if you're a little bit familiar with Brightspace now, there's the grades area, but there's also the class progress area. So when, as Rachel demonstrated, if we use the plus sign above in the overall feedback area, that kind of general text box, the uh, video that you put there is gonna show up for students in the grades area. If you use the record video down below where this arrow on the slide is po pointing, that's gonna show up in class progress. So unless you've kind of prepped the students to know to look there, they may overlook it, especially if everything else that you've been grading them on is going into their grades area. So it's not that it won't show up anywhere, it's just that it's gonna show up in a different area than a lot of your other feedback and, and grades. So again, instead of doing that, I suggest, you know, go in and click that little plus, insert stuff, and then add video notes. So if you just wanna start trying this, with especially with an online class so they have a, a good sense of you know your tone and and what's going on and how you're responding to an assignment why not give this a try and and see how it how it works but you know the big test will be will any of this help improve writing uh <laughs> and that's a whole other uh kind of that's a cliche kettle of fish but you know, is do, will this have a payoff in terms of the student essays? I do find, and again, this is very anecdotal. I have not been uh, systematic about studying it. It seems to clear up things like MLA. It seems to clear up kind of um, editing errors. Think kind of common errors, like let's capitalize S-U-N-Y you know, like that, I can kind of take stuff like that, at least off the table. Will this help with, you know, more global writing issues, um, you know, remains to be seen. I certainly think it helps for organizing an essay, you know, I'll say circle a paragraph and they can watch me circle with my cursor, like this paragraph, why don't you move it up here, you know, so anyway so that is really all i have for that and if anyone has any questions 
Thank you, Rachel. Yes, please feel free to unmute yourself or type in the chat whatever you'd like to, uh, to engage with Rachel. I think this is great. I, it's really interesting to, to, for me to see student feedback and what their perceptions are of the things that we try, right? And like you said, I, I would have been surprised too that people wanted both integrated somehow. So I think that's really something to consider. Yeah, I think that those of us who are introverts, it was a little bit like, oh boy, all right. <laughs> yeah, um, Elizabeth. Yeah, I did have a question. Um, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It just flew out of my mind. Um, that that's okay. I'll, I'll think of it though. <laughs> yeah, I uh, and I it. What else was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, I will be interested to see. I do. You know what? I can't measure. And Kate, am I correct in saying that I cannot see who has watched the video at this point, or I can in Panopto? In Panopto, you can. I can. Um, I don't know about the internal bright space recording. Okay. And you can even, you know, Panato has some pretty good metrics. You could see if people watched all of it, some of it, run back and watched it again. That would be really interesting to track. I did think of my question. Um, so uh, oftentimes, yeah, you know, having to read their essay and then type in all your comments. Um, also, it's problematic for me that often they use another type of file, you know, instead of a Word file that I can edit, that I can't edit. Well, in and Bright I'm thinking this would make that go away. It does. <laughs> and in Brightspace, what I've taken to doing, there's a way where you can limit, let's say they're uploading work. I've limited it now. It's got to be a PDF or a Word file. You ain't trying to do anything else because it's not you're going to get a warning that says no <laughs> but they, i still have them doing it though but um yeah i think that but there are settings where they you can set it also so it won't it won't accept, it. it's but a little they, bit of a pain in the butt but you just type in the extensions you will accept okay okay thank you and I do like, you know, it, 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 I, and I guess we had that with, uh, what was it, with turn it in and stuff. But I mean, I like the ability just to circle stuff too and to write and put a question mark and use different colors and highlight. So that, right, that's right. nice that Brightspace has that. So good. Well, thank you all. Thank you for coming. <laughs> well, thank you, Rachel, for sharing your experience with us. We really appreciate that. I love that you are always willing to participate in some of these crazy things we decide to do. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate your time. I'm going to throw in the chat a link where you can get the recording um, to all of our sessions, but also to Rachel's and her slides. And then just uh, note that uh, National Distance Learning Week is sponsored by USDLA and they have additional events that you might want to take a look at. So thank okay. you everyone. Yeah, we have one more session tomorrow morning at 11, but other than that, SUNY Online will draw to a close National Distance Learning Week for this year.